Bag fuel, baby. We back. Yo! Bag fuel in the building. Ooh. Queens represented today. Of course, I got my man to the left of me. Yes, Heineken, live in full effect, bag fuel, you see, on the chest, Ooh. mother effers. And today, we got a Queens represent a Shaw Money XL. I'm taking it back to the XL, Shaw. Right. Shaw Money XL, chain on the bike. <laughs> Shaw Money building. XL, yeah. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Listen, listen. Keeping an extra large life. Yo, bro, I, I, I hope you got some time, because we, because we, I know we a little late, you know what I'm saying, but there's a lot of going on. Let's but go, man, we here, Queens We about to money, dive man. into it. I, fuck it, me, right now. Mm. What was what was your mind like when Fifth signed that deal with Eminem? Yeah, my mind. Yeah, your mind like. Oh my mind! I think I was really in a good space mentally. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, cause I was on it. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. why he put me in charge of a lot of stuff. So I was focused. And uh, when that deal happened, I was the one to help execute it. And I just knew that this was the blessing, cause Em wasn't afraid of any of his beefs or any of mm -hmm. his issues. He didn't care about any of that. And you know, we don't went to labels where people. Just blocked them off, blackballed them because of that. So this was the first opportunity where someone just saw the talent, saw who he was, and believed that, and gave him a real good deal. You know what I mean? So he was in a good space, man. I, my mind was in a good space because, man, we, we I was 25. You know what I mean? Just had my first crib like a year earlier. Mm -hmm. So it was like, you know what I mean? Like we about to do this. Like this is about to happen. But how'd you transition? Because. When I first saw you there, I was like, this nigga is a producer. Mm -hmm. But now they telling me he's co-managing with Chris Lighty. Was that real? What was that? Like, I, I didn't get that side of it because you was the producer and then yeah. you popped up and then you was co-managing and you making decisions and helping the sign shit. So how it went was like this. For the first three years that I met Fifth, since 96, when Jam Master J introduced me to him, I didn't do no tracks for him. I didn't, my first track I ever did for him was on, on Power the Dollar, the, the title track, and then also um, the one on uh, Rest in Peace, Chad soundtrack. Uh, yeah, Black, 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 Black Hand. Black Hand, right? So that was the other track, a second track I did for him. But prior to that, I was the one driving him around. Yo, let's meet Stretch Armstrong. Let's meet, let meet this DJ. Yo, let's go mm -hmm. do this for Duke. You know what I mean? So I was telling him, like, moving him around with him. So okay. we were spending time where I was plugging him to, to certain people, mainly gotcha. DJs, you know what I gotcha. mean? Yeah. So he could get it going. So I would be sitting in the rooms with him and him and Nori and Nori and them filming something and or him and him and this dude and he just doing a freestyle. I'm just sitting right there. I ain't doing a track for him yet. So I was taking on a role of responsibility before it even became the title. So after a while, fifth after he got shot, you know, I was the one at the hospital the day he got shot. I'm calling his grandmother rest in peace every night. Like, yo, not every night, but just yeah. as much as I could. Checking in. And I just brought my first crib. And I wanted him to know I'm out the hood. I'm in Long Island. He could come through. So when he came through, it became that. Then it became, yo, I'm an engineer this. I'm going to actually plug you with this lawyer. I started introducing him to people that actually became a part of the, the whole piece. Gotcha. So he just, he had no trust for no one at that point. You know what I mean? Especially being in Queens, you, the wrong phone call, if I was the wrong person, it's a rap. it could have been a rap for him. You know what I mean? So, you know, he had his, he had all his, all the G-Unit soldiers that was all the younger generation from yeah. his hood that listened to him, Smurf and all of them, did whatever he said Bang when he said Smurf. it. Bang him, Smurf. Bang him, right? Yeah. So, I was the one that had the sense on the industry. I already had mm. the knowledge. I was an intern in that Def Jam. I had the connections. So I was the manager before Chris Lighty. Chris Lighty was trying to sign him. Yeah, I, 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 I was going to get to that, but I, yeah. I didn't want to jump in because yeah. I, I wanted to ask you how, how did it feel? I know some of these answers, mm -hmm. but, I, but I also wanted to know how how did it feel when when they brought Chris on? I, that's all I wanted to get because you ah, already see. You I was going to one yeah. day. I'm the one that brought Chris. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, I said, bro, because Chris gave me my first check. Ever in this industry. Uh -huh. Rest in peace, Lighty, right? Yeah. So I uh, called Mega Angel Dust. That was the first check I ever got. Chris, I mm. always looked at him as the one. Like he was the he was the black man that was helping others and doing everything right. So That's I always rock with him, right? So I was like, yo, we need an OG to help us so we make the right decisions, we make the right mm. moves. Chris Lighty got this. So I was like, yo, let me take you to his office. And I took him there, he met him, they connected, he knew him. But he never really connected him with him like that. <clears throat> and from that moment, that's when Chris actually tried to sign him. But that's when that was the connection of that brought Chris together. Yeah. 
I want to ask you a cultural thing, but it's still within the music, because you know we both Haitian. Oh, you a yeah. Zo, bro? Yeah, Zo. Oh, you didn't know that? I didn't know that. A bro. lot of people. Zo but, oh. God, that's what's up, man. He's so Haitian. How, <laughs> how, how do you not know? I, I did not yeah, know, I know, man. I think Casper <laughs> mentioned that, too, but Who? I, my boy Cas. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, because understanding the family background, now you're going towards music. Mm -hmm. You're rocking with Fifth, who's in the streets. What was it like for, I don't know if your moms or pops was alive when you catching them checks where they could be like, oh, that's mm -hmm. my son. Yeah, yeah. But did you have that moment? Because you know, yeah. when you're not the doctor, lawyer, engineer, Yo, you want to be able to slap that Yo, check in their face. I'm happy you said that and know that because I was I was like the black the black sheep of the family. Yes, I know. 17 I, me too. years old, jail time, a year yeah. in prison. So I got born. <laughs> high school dropped out, went to Jamaica, so, oh, so they, oh I was the God. loser in their eyes, so everybody- They can't well, bring them to the family function. All of that, yeah. so, so, but when I did this joint with Jane Blaze from Queens, mm -hmm. Jive gave me a check for like 50 grand. So at, I, I'm, I'm coming home with this check to show my moms, I already had a daughter, yeah. and I had a son on the way. Yeah. And she looked at me and was like, you're buying a house. <laughs> That's the Haitian thing. That's what she, she you get out of my house, you're gonna buy a house. So she's the one that first told, told me. Yeah, yeah, to get about that the crib, crib. And get that crib and get my first crib that ended up with the basement where we did everything. And that wow. she was happy for me. Cause she was like, wow, you did that. And that's, she's the one that made me go to piano school. Mm, gotcha. So it goes back to her, her decisions. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. so she, for her, she looked at it like, wow, you turned something into something. Cause that's what turned me into music, just, you know. Because now, but when 50's blowing up and it, he's cultural and your mom can say, my son is responsible for that. That's a different level of uh, shit talking was, with the that, Asians. Yeah, it was, was to push your cousin on. So, all right, so, so two question for. That's one of the funniest niggas so I've ever met in life. My cousin shout out to Who Kid. Um, Who Kid was a DJ all the time, yeah. you know what I mean? Like he would come to my crib and then we go to his, him and Bugs and we'd be in his attic yeah. just going. So. I kept calling him initially when he was working at the airport. Mm. Like, cuz, this is the one. You should be the DJ. Like, we need a DJ. Yeah. And at that moment, if you from Queens and you know everything going on, nobody really wanted to be around Fifth, fifth unless you was with that shit, bro. Mm. Unless you didn't, you didn't yeah. use yeah. the fear factor wasn't in. So for who kid, the fear factor was there. So yeah, he, yeah. He, he was <laughs> like, hell no, bro. He was like, nah, that's, that's bro, they're gonna, they're gonna kill him. You're bugging, yo. He was literally talking to me like that. They're gonna, you're, you're crazy. Like he's telling me I'm crazy. Yo, you crazy. My niggas in my hood was telling me I was crazy. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. South side don't mix with North side, all yeah. of that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then like, I was no, like, I, cause I was like, I don't know this Sean Money nigga. Yeah. They like, he from North side. I'm like, <laughs> exactly. how the fuck? Yeah. I'm like, 50's the most South side. How the fuck he these guys most. started fucking with this nigga from <laughs> North side? I was like, no wonder I didn't know Sean <laughs> Money or some real shit. Everything, we was running around. Or some so, real so, shit, So, yeah. so who cares? After the first mixtape, if you look at 50 yeah. Cent's The Future, my name is the DJ on that. Mm. Who could it? And then when he saw that response and seeing how guess who's back, yeah. and that came from a month apart. I'll DJ. He was like, "Hey, hey man, hey. let me do the next one." <laughs> so, Come on, cuz that's what we here for. No, of course. You know what I mean? That's the cuz. Mm -hmm. So, so he did, and look where he at now. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So that was the right move. We need to have him on this show. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I that, don't know that's him. That's gonna be a comedy I, show. Oh yeah. No, yeah. That, I, that, I only met him I one time. I interviewed him twice. I, I don't yeah. know him though. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta stop. I, it's off camera. That's a whole nother day. He, he, he cracked the joke that involved you. Uh huh. <laughs> I don't, you got the call. It's bad, right? <laughs> it was a, it was a good joke. It was a good joke. But it made someone else uncomfortable. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Hey. That that's uh, the I joke. Looked at it the like, comfortable part is probably the ninety nine percent truth of the joke, huh? Oh no, it was true. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. that's where people get their feelings. But now right? that's the funny guy though. Yeah. How'd you deal with the yeah. Fear factor. Mm. Not to say that you was afraid, but to but, say it was danger. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like in, any nigga that's around danger, if you're really around danger, yeah, you gonna have to man up. But uh, like, how 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 are y'all dealing with that and working as hard as y'all was yeah. working? And y'all was outside yeah. moving around. For one, we had every. Thing we needed, if anything was to happen, everybody was Got on you. point. Mm -hmm. Fifth was it was the military. We was moving right. Two, being Haitian, I used to have to beat niggas up just for being Haitian. Mm -hmm. So I already had that energy. Like I'm not afraid of nobody because niggas used to disrespect us, HBO, all that mm -hmm. shit mm -hmm. back in the. So I used to have to be that. So coming with him, it was like, all right, he just got some real shit going on. 
I ain't gonna be able to be talking to people who might want to know where we at, and mm. the, you have to be moved like a militant. Like you mm. can't just be, yo, I'm here, son, come pull up, or yo, yo, fifth at my crib. Nobody knew where I lived. Nobody knew what we was doing, and that was the that was the part of how you had to move at that that year, that time when when shit was really hot for him. You know what I mean? So it's just who we was, just just really ready to grind and ready. My whole thing was whatever we was ready to live for, we was ready to die for. Mm. And that was the factor. Was it awkward you being from Northside and his biggest adversary is Irv Gotti? Mm -hmm. and he's from Northside. Yep. They, they, now it's like, yo, you know, Northside and Southside has their own history. So you're working through that and he has drama. And then you got this guy who's moving militant with the people he got around. How did you navigate that? So. Irv never really, even him being from Northside, he really was messing with everyone else, Will Hall and everybody, not, no one from Shadyville or Queensville. Yeah, okay, He kind of moved on the other side. Mm. So he never blended in with us. He was never outside with us. He was never on the block with mm. us. He was never around us. And he's like older than me, so he's a few generations, you know what I mean? So Got you. I ain't never really see him around like that. And if he is, he just moving through. Mm. So for me, it was never a relationship. There was mm. never anything. You know what I mean? My first, um, one of the first things that, I could say that was crazy was I did a record with Tragedy and then Ja Rule jumped on it, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Bing Monsters. And then I was like, oh shit, Ja Rule's on one of my tracks, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? But other than that, I never had no intertwine with them. Mm -hmm. And that's when I actually intertwined with Chris Gotti because he was like, yo, who did that track? And that's when I first got a call from him. But Irv never, yeah, right. never really stepped in, you know what I mean? He, just, he was on his own time, on side. <sighs> what, what, what was the most surprising thing that you encountered along that early journey? Yo, man. <laughs> man, what is the most surprising thing, man? Just give us one, man. That's a good question, bro. I would have to say that, you know what I mean, as, as we was growing up, coming up, we had soldiers. Mm -hmm. So you, you see all these people willing to do whatever at that any given moment. And for me, you know what I mean, in my hood, we, we done had flipped on each other, this one but he had like militant homies with him. Mm. So for me, it was like, this the first time I seen a structure, like we was moving like an army. You know what I mean? And, and, and being from Shadyville, we had a whole cruise and all of that, but we moved like one. Nobody was doing their own thing on their own time. And anytime someone did something that was against what we was, fifth went at them. So for me, that was the, you know, I never seen structure like that. So that for me, that was like, this is what I fucks with. That's, the, that's, what, that's how it should be. So surpri surprising enough, that was something different for me. Cause we we fighting each other in my hood, like you know what I mean. To him, he had the soldiers, bro. Have you asked you and Fifth spoke? Cause I remember he told the story. One of I don't know if he was upset or discomfort about the whole points and you trying to recoup the money. That was a big thing. It's mm -hmm. audio book. Yeah, yeah, it's all over. It makes me look like a dummy. It makes me look crazy. Like he know what he doing, but <laughs> right, he know what he doing. Yeah. He's a smart dude. You yeah. can't. That's yeah. the last person you want a problem with, right? Mm -hmm. So. What he's doing is basically trying to say he gave me a point, right? Yeah. When the argument wasn't about the point, the point was mine. Mm -hmm. It was mine. If I do a track, I get my three points. If I do executive produce, I get my mm -hmm. point. If I pro produce, I get my publishing. He's not giving it to me, but he made it seem like he was giving it to me. The argument was, I wanted 50,000. I want a bigger advance. He only wanted to give me 30. So we fought over 20 grand. He recouped it in six months. Mm -hmm. All I was saying, homie, give me a bigger advance. Mm -hmm. That's the whole thing. But he changed it to make it seem like it was like he gave me something that was already mine. Because the way he said it, I'm paraphrasing, he would have gave you an extra point to rather than the 20 extra thousand. He's like, that point would have turned into more money. He got a million dollar advance, mm -hmm. recouped it in six months. That money is what recoups. Yeah. It's just money that you're putting out that you're going to make back. Mm. It's All just I money. was looking for... He needed more money. I needed a little more money. I said, that's bro, a, this is, this, bro, we working at McDonald's what the 30 line. G's a year, man. I like need, anything. I need I just, 20 more give grand. Give me a little more money, bro. Is, is, is and what we, he was saying. Out of Tahoe, mm. let me go buy something. You Got you. Let, we 24, Yeah, 25. you might not. I might not wasn't supposed to... Say I wasn't supposed to get it. It was right? a negotiation. All Listen, I wanted was a bigger advantage. you the hottest nigga in the world. You got a million. <laughs> let me and let me just get twenty more. As thousand. the manager, you're supposed to get the ten, but I did the non-conflict part, so I didn't. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I said, bro, this is where we gonna do this. I didn't want to try to fight to him where we ended it right there. Yeah, that was another thing. You could see with him, you, you could end real fast. Mm -hmm. So I was like, nah, let me just. All right, bro, you got it. Got you. So, but he made the story look like he gave me the point, <laughs> and all I wanted was thirty grand. 
I work, I make 30 grand working at my mom's shop, bro. I didn't need 30 grand, bro. I need to, I'm here to invest in the future. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm investing in your future. They want to kill you, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm investing in, I could, my life could go. You know what I'm saying in this? So, mm. so 30 grand wasn't the issue. It was, it was just give me a bigger, yo, I'm Understood. your homie. Give me a bigger yeah. check. It, it happens like that. It does, and but it, it's always the brothers that be cheaper with each other, bro. It, it, it be, I mean, listen, it gets it gets tough. Like, yeah. it gets tough because we all think about money. Like somebody was on the show until it actually comes. Arsonist. Like and, yeah, and when we get that money and it actually comes, now we realize all the oh, other things that we had to do and responsibilities. So I, I probably would have normally gave Sean money to fifty grand, and it wouldn't have been nothing. But this shit really happening, and there's other things that I want to do, and I got I'm feeling this cash in my hand right now. And, and overnight, it's coming from the Interscope. It ain't coming out. Of that, 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 yeah, that. I know that, but yeah. but 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 no matter where it's coming from, we yeah. all feel like that's my money. Yeah. But but that's also, that's my man. Mm -hmm. I take care of my peoples. If I got it, yeah. I'm giving it, son. Yeah, that's I know, I, but, but I, I, I just know, and I always, I always be devil's advocate because I've been on the business side, so they mm -hmm. know I'm, I understand where, where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. So being devil's advocate on, on the creative side, I don't think that they understand the difference with being the businessman and being the breadwinner created. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't think that they really even take time and be like, yo, this is the position that my man who is my manager is in. Mm -hmm. And and niggas was wild young. They were both yeah. they were both wild young. Look when at Mace, Mason fucking Cameron been separated over money over a video yeah. that wasn't from <laughs> Ken, wasn't from Mace or anybody. Yeah, They've been true. separated over a disagreement and them niggas is back together. But that's the thing. Money mm. changes everything, bro. All the time. Mm. Money changes it. When you broke, you can have nine jobs because I ain't paying you. As soon as time to get paid for it, it's like, bro, what are you Jamaican now? Like you nigga, you got See? Now, now, now you can't get paid for all nine jobs. But mm -hmm. so it's it's just part of it where mm -hmm. when it's free, you let a nigga do it. Yeah, but y'all yeah. maintained, but y'all maintained so long after that, then you went to Def Jam, yep. and then you was on, you 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 had the project on Def Jam, you had the Jeremiah, and you put 50 Cent on those records. Yeah. Those were shit in, 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 that was coming from your project land, right? Well, not necessarily the Jeremiah. No, okay. I can't take credit for that one. Okay, uh, I can't. I really can't. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But either way, like, even after I left, mm -hmm. I got a call from Dre and Paul, and I came back and did before I self-destruct with him. Gotcha. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we didn't have beef. You know what I mean? We, yeah, the issue was based on money and him feeling like Shah's doing too much, making too and he wanted to take it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So he got it and he got what he got. Right. You know what I mean? You were part of one of the greatest runs. Gre and that's what I want. You I don't, part, want, I don't you want, were, want the legacy broken. No, nah, like, you we, are we got intricate. To Let me not each other. say a part. You were an intricate part yeah. of one of the greatest albums mm -hmm. and the greatest runs, runs of all, all time. time. One of the greatest artists. He's top, he's top, whatever. He's on, on the list. That's right. When you were, when, when at the beginning stages of y'all doing that, was that even a possibility in your mind that it Absolutely. was going to go this far? I knew he was the one, because I knew since 96, when I heard, you know when we go to Rosedale and Jay Basement with him, Randy, and everybody, they playing music. I'm hearing all the ill new Onyx records. I'm hearing all the Lost Boy shit. I'm hearing Sugar, and then I'm hearing this dude. I'm like, wait a second. This not, he not yelling. There's no loud backgrounds. It's a different time when I heard that. And this mm -hmm. is like, Mace was the only one with that tone. Of course, Nas, but then his had more of a street tone. Like, so when I heard that, I was like, yo, this one right here? That's the voice right there. I'm into voices. So when I heard mm -hmm. his voice and his flow, I, I heard it. So I knew it. When he I got it. shot in his mouth and his voice it changed. Went, it went even crazy. So you, did, you, did you hear him? It's like, yo, this shit sound even better? Better. Wow. Better. Better. He literally came to my house after his mouth was wide. He that's like, I was the second session. The first record he did was Fuck You. Mm -hmm. And then after that, everything else he did in my crib. He never left my crib after that. Mm -hmm. And and you so can you had everybody that. smoking down smoking, there. Two chilling. for one cheeseburgers. We Let's had go. the whole guns everywhere. Just chilling. Moms ain't upstairs. Nobody upstairs my crib. My kids, if anything, baby mother, but yeah. my crib. You getting that 50000 for that before you- 30. Thir no, but, <laughs> no, no, you're talking about the, the, you're talking about the Jane Blaze The Jane Blaze. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Jane Blaze. Yep. So you're like, soup, you're younger now mm -hmm. at that time, and I don't know who's around. You could tell me the landscape of Queens, but you're probably the closest dude in proximity to know what it is to get paid for music. 
like that, mm -hmm. it, it, within that nature, did that really galvanize the, the crew around you to sh be like, yo, this nigga shy got a check for 50 pans. No, nah, because I wasn't one of those dudes where I get it and I'm telling everybody what I got. Oh, they didn't know. I'm not a flamboyant dude, you know <laughs> oh. what I'm saying? So, so I went and brought the crib immediately. That money was blown. So even if I got, got it, you. it went to the crib. Uh -huh. It was gone. You put that, that's damn near the whole deposit in, yeah. you know what I mean? So at that time, so, mm. so I didn't really have money after that. I just had a crib. Yeah. And then I went and started getting equipment. I was a producer. I, my first record I ever recorded on Pro Tools was What Up Gangster. After that, before wow. that, we was doing all ADATs. Me and my man Kai sharing ADATs. What a record, your first record, What Up Gangsta on yeah, Pro Tools. That's the first record I ever recorded. Oh, wow. But I was literally calling the Sam Mash dude, like, how do you use this? I mm. wasn't here to be an engineer. We ain't have no money to pay an engineer. Gotcha. We ain't had nobody to record him. So I'm like, nigga, I'm going to do it. And that's what we did. And that's what was the moment when y'all realized that you made it and you said this nigga is a superstar? Man, after we dropped Guess Who's Back and 50 Cent's The Future, like it was a month apart. I just knew it, bro. Because I was the one actually selling the tapes to all the stores from Harlem to Queens, everywhere. Because you was a drop DJ. Off. Yeah. And you know, if you know selling mixtapes, the way the market is, unless you was Clue, they duplicate your shit in a heartbeat, bro. Mm -hmm. And Clue was spreading his shit around so nobody, by the time they duplicated, he made his first big bag. Mm -hmm. Mines was like, in 24 hours, this shit gonna get duplicated, so you better go every borough in Fast. one day, bro. Mm -hmm. If you really know how this mixtape thing go. What was that mixtape money like? Nothing, it was a few grand. You paid electric bill, if anything. Mm. It was nothing crazy, because like I said, the next day, you know the African bullet market. They so his kids. name was getting so bigger that was before the his pocket. That was the free That was the market. marketing. Gotcha. So we didn't care about that money. We really didn't care. You know what I'm saying? And it was really about spreading that music out. And and guess who's back was like a little bit of powder, dollar, all the records, the best ones, plus all the new records I did yeah. with them. Because I remember bars I, and all of them. I remember Fifth saying his I, his goal was to you know go to all the college radio stations and break the record, mm -hmm. and like they weren't fucking with him. And the mixtape was almost like an accident. I don't know if that's the, the same version of what y'all went through, and it just took a whole life of its own. So it wasn't an accident because we premeditated half. Gotcha. Fifth would literally talk to me about conversations to have with, with people. Mm. Everything with him was premeditated. So if anything, we had the artwork and the cover done, and we had all these mixtapes. We gave Clue a, a, a freestyle, yeah. Flex a freestyle, Doo Wop a freestyle, Cut Master C a freestyle. I said, bro, let's put this all on one thing. Let the streets hear it all. Cause you gotta listen to everybody individual mixtape to hear it. Yeah. So I said, let's put it all together. Then we had the record with UTP, cause Juvenile pulled yeah. up to my crib. You know what I mean? What was that like? Oh, that was the best, bro. That was the best. That's probably one of my favorite memories, bro, to add to that. Like, what was that? All right, rest in peace, CeeLo. He was the driver, mm -hmm. right? And he from, you know, from Long Island and Queens, my hood, my OG PR and them know him. Called him, said, yo, they're in the child's crib. He's like, yo, we're gonna pull up to his crib in the bus. The juvenile come to my crib in, in Long Island bus. on the tour bus, Young Bucks on the bus, the whole UTP, all his soldiers, they come down to my basement. And we start, we cut like two records there, then we went to his bus in the city and cut the rest. But that's how that record on that mixtape was done. So from Legendary. him coming to my crib, bro. I'm like, a bunch of New Orleans niggas just walking in my crib. <laughs> yo. This was crazy, yo. So Skip all of them, man. <laughs> all of them, bro. That's crazy. Buck was there, and then that's, that's how it started. That's how Buck got the unit eventually. Mm. Is, this, is this story true, that the first time that M got 50's record was from a bodyguard nigga from Queens or something like that, a security yeah, so nigga? so half of Eminem's staff was from 40 Project. I, I, I heard, how, what, what oh, was I'm that not, about? Uh, I don't, Yo, I, they but, were security guards. They big niggas. Yo, yeah, they were like big, the, son. But, but and he's from Detroit, Detroit and from California. California. Yeah. They got South we're trying niggas to, from 40 Project as well, a security. You know, they street hired niggas, them street from niggas. a company that was probably a security company. Gotcha. They were good, bro. They really mm. did their thing. Mm. And I remember them like they was, some of them were brothers and cousins. And they're all from Queens, bro. Mm -hmm. All of them. And they was they gave us love, bro. So they he was in the whip playing and shit. And M was, then M heard it and kept playing and shit. Then he called Theo, and Theo called me, and me and Fifth in my basement, and we we found out right there. We was like, we'll jump on a plane tomorrow. 
<laughs> but I definitely know that's how, like, that security guard. Because niggas, because have niggas tell me, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm a Queens nigga, so sometimes shit thing, be, it, it, it be legend. Remember. You know yeah, what I'm saying? It be urban legend. Yeah, so I'll be like, yo, is that really a story? Niggas be uh, like, yeah, my man was doing so and so. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna name niggas' name because they told us, they they told a story just like that. He was mm -hmm. playing the shit. And M heard it. He said nigga was playing the shit on purpose, nigga. And like M knew Fifth. Like they, they. Okay, been, I didn't he, know that. Yeah, Fifth. I didn't know that. Yeah, M met Fifth before. They was they, they got a picture of way back in the nineties. Wow. On some lyric shit, They're like mm. yeah, him, Al, all of them punching, all of them words worth, all of them together. They, like Fifth was on some shit. Like he would step out, mm -hmm. so he got into that. And M knew who he was. He met him, but when that was a different Fifth. Mm. When this came, this was a different way. And different. he hearing one, two, like you hearing songs back to back and hearing where he going. M could see it. He heard it. He he saw it. Shout out to M. It's one of the things that I think was ill with Fifth that he said, and this you know transition into how a lot of people treat their shit. He said I always treated my mixtapes like an album because before him. Mixtapes were just throwaways. The production was trash. The bars, mm -hmm. the bars weren't trash. But he's like, I'm gonna make it sound like a studio album. Yeah. And from that day on, everything else went up in that's value. That's it. And because that's what the first one, you know what I mean? Like that's what broke him. And that mm. was his passion. He knew the streets was getting it. So we honestly, that year alone, we dropped like four mixtapes. Oh, the yeah. streets was just. It was crazy, man. Y'all was forcing Hot 97s in. You know what I mean? All of that just came. It was crazy. What do you hate about the business side and, and the music business? It's a repeated thing. Mm. So, so what me coming in, if I learn some bad behavior from the one that I came up under, I'm going to repeat it. We don't break the curse. So if I'm taking your pub and I'm taking your That's this, what I've learned. Yeah, I'm taking gonna, pub. I'm a, that's what I learned to do. So I'm going to do it because they did it to me. We don't break the curse. We don't break the cycle. Right? And... You know, we got all these coalitions that are saying they're doing this for the black people. Remember Black Lives Matter and all of that? Yeah. Ain't no real black execs doing nothing right now. There's nobody doing it. L.A. Reid was the top black exec. He's the only chairman. Now we got one more chairman possibly right now for Def Jam, but there's nothing that we're doing in the industry that really matters in a sense besides just go make the music, go kill somebody on that record, don't be positive on that record, be the worst person so we can promote that. And between that and just everybody repeating the 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 mm. the, 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 the thieving and the stealing and the mm. that systematic part is it's, it's like going to jail, man. You're gonna follow the routine. You're gonna get with the system, bro. You you had a part with Bobby and Rowdy, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I heard through the grapevine and things of that nature. People didn't know at the time. Mm -hmm. They're like, yo, Shaw's really doing work with them and stuff like yeah, that. Shaw 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 was supposed to sign. Um, Fetty Wap for me. Inch Wait, really? Yes, nigga. Oh, I was at his house in California. Yes. Shaw was supposed to sign Fetty Wap oh, for me. Wow. And he turned down Fetty Wap for Bobby Schmerger. Yeah. That's wow. Real. Oh, you was on. That's real. I had it. I See, niggas don't know. I be having shit early, nigga. I had Drake early. Mm. And I gave it the clue. And I had shit. See, that's and when I, and he was with Rockwell. Yes, right. nigga. I, had, I be having shit. Yo, I, when I say I had Drake shit, and you know. Clue never said this, and he said it one time around Heineken, and he said, he said, yo, Randy had Drake shit first. I had it with a Jewish nigga with a half a million dollars, and everybody was telling me he sound like Lupe Fiasco. Wow. What Facts. Ma what made you take Bobby over um, Fetty Wap? Yo, Bobby, when I met him, bro, they all came in the studio. Yeah. Just felt like home to me, bro. Mm, they remind you of Fetty Remind fifth? me of the unit, the whole wow. crew, uh, his uncle. You know what yeah, I mean? I heard, Debo. And Bobby did that legendary performance at Sony that still Yo, goes viral still to this yeah. day. That, that was the audition. <laughs> yeah. Man, I called his lawyer, who was my lawyer, yeah. who was 50's lawyer, <laughs> and said, bro, don't hit the 59th Street Bridge. Come up Madison and hit right here at Sony. We're signing him today. Esso, what do you always say? If they really want you, they're going to sign you that day. The they don't day. let yo, you leave yo, the building. He, yo, and, <laughs> and, and to Shaw's credit, yeah. we was managing the breed together. We tried mm -hmm. to we, we tried to pop the breed off. Yes, we did. And I had Chris. Yeah. We had Chris too early. Mm, Interesting. Yeah, Chris was Blast fired, bro. And, Blast, bro, if you, if you Nashville, listen. Right? From Nashville, right? Yes. Yeah. No, he from um, Laville, uh, Arkansas. Arkansas. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yo, he's Blast. Blast sounds just like Chris. The right. cadence, mm. the writing, 
everything. Chris was and dope. Chris, Chris just got to the, he got to the audition, and I don't know, it just everything just didn't fit. Yeah. But he had, he had the records and everything, and Shaw tried to push I the did. button on I did, that. Bro. For us, I definitely bro. did. I saw that. After yeah, you yeah. left Def Jam mm -hmm. and you was with Sony, yep. Chris should be a star. I'm telling y'all, and Facts. niggas from Blast could be mad or at me. Or Friday, like Listen, that Friday. They yeah. heard Chris, mm -hmm. bro. Mm -hmm. Blast is too much like Chris. <laughs> when you listen to it, niggas be like, is that Chris? And I'm like, no, that's the kid from the West Coast named, named Blast. But we was on the cutting edge of that, mm, and, right I, and, and, and I respected that, because I always said, I said, damn, Shaw should have signed that fucking Fetty Wap for me. Because mm -hmm. everybody, remember, I asked you, when we had Son on the show, yeah. everybody was passing Fetty Wap shit around yeah. so you yeah, could get credit records. for it. Yeah. Yeah. And niggas was nobody was jumping on Fetty, my yeah. nigga, nobody. The only nigga I know that supported Fetty from the beginning was DJ Self. Yeah. Self was with 30 from the beginning. From day one. Did huh? I know? You That's know what good, I'm saying? When, when the success it, with it hurts when you sign these one hit wonders, though, man. It do. But hold on, why does it hurt? Because you went from Legacy, something that to this day, yeah. one of the best albums, and then the whole movement, right? Yeah. Then you, you know, I'll go on and sign Two Chains. That was another big one for me, right? So I was very happy for him Momentum. because he was in a situation where. Yeah. He could have went to Cash Money, could have went to Wayne. He mm. went, people wanted him, but he was trying to get out of a situation, and I was able to help navigate it, and he delivered, right? That's the greatness I love, right? Yo Gotti, same greatness, right? Mm. But then you get these guys that you sign, and yeah, Bobby had that record. The record was fire. We went and made the EP. We went to jail. I'm looking for him to make another hit after. You, you can't find a hit in sight. But I mean, he was in jail for seven years. Yeah, so you, you think it's going to take time. Yeah. One year, two year. Big Hit was in jail. Big Hit out here going so, crazy. So you mean, so you mean since <laughs> big, he's been big, big hit out here going so, nuts? Hold so, on, hold so, on. So, so, since so, he's been back home is what you're referencing. Yeah, since he's been back home. Because when we went, Bobby, we got Bobby Bitch, the second record. Yeah. That took off for him. So computers, I found the record. Where he was on Compu computers. So computers, we did Roddy. That. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Wiped the case away. He got some records. But when he came home, I'm like, I want to see him win. Because that's a part of mine. Yeah, the legacy. Like, yo, I signed him. So I want to see him win. He back at Epic, right? Yeah. Uh, he hear no record, bro. And he see it and hear it, nothing. Do you think because how he caught the record, he caught it unconventionally? It wasn't from the machine. It was yep. really an internet shit. There was and no that's campaign. That's when I was like, yo, we got to go back in with Jalil Beats. With nah, huh? we got to get, that's why I Jalil went. Beats, yeah. Jalil, Bam. let's get yeah. called, yo, come up from Philly, bro. Give me some more of that. Keep the formula. Keep yeah. the recipe. And that was what it was about. Yeah. And we got Bobby Bitch and a few other records and then gone. I mean, and I took an L for him getting going in jail. What L did you take? Thing, I got yeah. fired behind, behind that. Really? Yeah. Because yeah. I'm not a social worker. I ain't supposed to know he. I ain't asking niggas <laughs> little fucking. You got priors. Imagine and being he was there. He was there when they ran down in the, in in the studio. He was there. Yeah, I was in there. They was had it? to let him go. They had to find out he hold was on, legit, on. nigga. You been with Fifth and you done seen crazy shit. But what was it like? Nothing crazier than that, bro. Then the what? that Bobby Day. Yeah. Never seen nothing like that, bro. We looked outside, it was a bus, straight up bus full of police coming inside. Yeah. And they couldn't get up to the floor, yeah. so they did everything they could until they got up there. Fire department did what they did and got them up there. First thing I seen was a gun in my face before I seen the police. So why nobody tried to get, there, there, there was no way like to go to another studio? Did they, did they search the no, whole studio? They was on the stairs, both left and right sides. Mm. They, so whoever was running down, they gonna catch him. Mm -hmm. Whoever was hiding, they, you see that? Someone was in one of those. They jumped in that. <laughs> Yo. They was hiding in the ceilings, hiding behind walls. Them niggas hiding from 12 p.m. The last person they found was 6 a.m. They searched the whole building. That thing was crazy, bro. I never seen nothing like that, bro. And they came out drawing. They wasn't coming out on no cool time, bro. So. That could have easily went left that alone. Yeah. You know what I mean? And everybody in there had a gun. So it wasn't like. <laughs> it wasn't like they, so they had no gun. They, they could have let it go. And they had, had probable had cause probable to let it go. Cause, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? 15 people, 22 guns. More guns than people? Yeah. yeah they had cause. They just had multiple guns. Huh? So <laughs> that, that honestly, for the record, is just being in the studio. I've never been back to Quad since. I'm 723 ain't seeing me, bro. Based on that day. Wow. Just so y'all know, niggas carry multiple guns. That's where they hit pop <laughs> too, bro. Same yeah. elevator. Me and Bobby yeah, in the I elevator. Every time we yo, that shit I'm like, yo, bro. Elevator come down. We see Buster. Buster saying that. We go back down. 
Yo, Bob, man, yo, just, yo, come move to Cali with me. I moved to Cali. I said, come move yeah, to California. Yeah, he moved to Cali. You trying to get Bobby to move? Yo, get out of here, bro. Then y'all sent him to, to Miami? Miami, the first, at, I, at one time? For a little that, bit, that, yeah. That that's true? his uncle. That was that, his uncle. Is that true? That's yeah, his no, uncle. That's, okay. But that's how it started. That's yeah. when, And then he got on stage with, with, with me, and that's when things started going a little viral for him because his uncle lived in Miami, so yeah. his uncle was a part of that. I've decision. been heard that one. Yeah, that is his uncle. And then Fab was around, was, and then he was standing there. When his, he was at in Brooklyn, there's the imaginary King's Highway, mm -hmm. which it goes into Queens if you take, uh, like, but um, that little imaginary line right there, he couldn't cross it. If he crossed it, guns on sight. So his radius was, it's almost like Mayor of Kingston. Remember the, the crib dude? Mm -hmm. He can't leave the four block radius, oh, yeah, yeah. even though he's the king. Uh -huh. It's the same thing with Bobby. Yeah, yeah, nah, nah, they was wilding out in Brooklyn. His, they gang gang Yo, for real, bro. They was wilding. Did, do you ever sit back and think about all the hip hop shit that you did and all the thug shit? You've been hearing it. That 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 you're you're a producer and executive. Mm -hmm. But all the thug shit that you didn't been involved <laughs> in, you didn't been involved with and Fifty Cent and Bobby Smurda and Rowdy Rebel, like. What are we talking about? Do you think about that shit? Yeah, no, definitely. Yo. What's your thoughts about it? Yo, man, that that was not only thoughts, that was therapy, that was really? real life experiences that you make it through. Like we done been through shootouts. I done seen so much shit, bro, that I don't, like I'm thinking, God, we here right now. You know what I mean? Cause we done been in all. Now imagine being the first person out the car. Fifth is in the bulletproof. So you can't open the door. So I'm in the car that's not the bulletproof. But I'm on the road, so I gotta go collect the money, me and Mike Lighty. So at any given moment, it could have been us first. Yeah. So we had to just buckle all of that feeling up and just black out, bro. Yeah. Black out. Shout out to Mike Lighty. Shout out to Mike Lighty. You went to Morgan State with me, Morgan State grad. Shout what? out to the band, yeah. you heard? Yeah, yeah. yeah, Mike Lighty, I tell I always tell the story that Mike Lighty was in college with us. He's like, Chris Lighty, my brother. We was like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be in college here if Chris is your brother. <laughs> Chris is running around with Tribe Called Yo. Quest, and you tell me that you down yeah. here in Morgan State, and yeah. then Tribe came down there, Praise and Chris was his brother, and we were all looking like, oh shit, this Praise is wild. Him. Chris Lighty, brother, go. What do you look for in the star? Because, like, you Name so many stars. Like, well, what are the elements you look for? The voice, first. Yes, thing, you said that, right? Then the song making. Like, what are they making? What are they talking about? Is Does the it process sound or the creativity? The creative part. Like, just hearing their music away from me even creating with them. Just seeing mm -hmm. where they at, what they talking about, what it feel like. Can I listen to a whole album of this? Can I hear this voice more than one time in a row? Mm. I take all of those factors in, and then what's the big picture of this person when you look at them? Like. You know what I mean? Mm. And it's it's a whole factor for me, man. You know what I mean? Voice. Yeah, I ain't even look at the performance yet, but it's like what we doing. Then we get in that studio, and if I'm in there and I get to see what you're doing, and if it's right, then we really gonna get started. But it's a combination of a What about you, Essa? I look at star power first. Mm. Then I wanna hear your song. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like That's it's, a good it's, it's kinda it's kinda it's kinda it voice it, it's kinda voice kinda yeah. but I gotta feel like you a star when I Mag walk in. Magnetism. Like, when I true. met K Max um singer, when we met her the first night. Honey baby. Her, yeah, I said, yo, when K came to me, the first thing he said, he said, Yo, Ram, what you think? I said, She's a star. Yeah. Mm. He's like, Word, I'm gonna go forward with her. Got her deal in three months. Mm. And she just did the show with us and we told the story, but she was a star, just not because she looked like one, her personality. She mm, pulled out a, a bottle fight. of hen dog, yeah. little pretty little light-skinned bitch, most rugged bitch probably mm -hmm. inside the whole joint. I like her. She rap? No, she sing. Sing? Mm. Sign her up, my nigga. I don't even, we don't even, when, when she sing, we don't even need to hear her songs. Can she really sing it? He's a producer. I take your word for it. You need songs for her, my That's nigga. Right. Wow. And you can move forward. Mm -hmm. As successful as, as you've been, you know, you've seen checks for all over. Is it really a lot of downtime where the money don't come in? Okay, so that's a different level. Every six months. <laughs> every six months? But, 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 but he got every, residuals. Every, th every three months in between. Mm -hmm. you know See, but, but he's different. Yeah. He got residuals coming from albums that's mm -hmm. gonna sell. He got sell. albums that recoup. I got albums that I did 20 years ago that didn't recoup. That didn't recoup. But, but, but he mm -hmm. got recoup albums. But he been on singles. But money once it start coming. Yeah, he, he, mm -hmm. been on, he, he been on singles. He, he, he's different, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, actually he, did the work, produced. And, and people don't have those albums. That you're gonna collect on, 
that are going to be good money. You might get pennies then, from certain let things. Let me say this one. Mm -hmm. A lot of producers like my homies that I came up with, mm -hmm. they don't keep copies of their contracts, right? They forget what they do and think they, they forgot they got three points on this. So this royalty is, is not a comp troller. The music industry don't have to report the money to no one, right? This is where the Sony chairman is bonusing 100 million, right? Yeah. Because the money after a while is, is just sitting there. Nobody came for Nobody it. Nobody claimed it. Nobody claimed it. Is there, is there so, a time limit until? No. No, but you no, got to claim it. And if it doesn't it. claim so it, he, it goes to escrow. And you know what they get? They get all the interest. The, all the interest. They can pocket that. And yeah. they just leave your money there like it's if, a retirement plan call, for them. Yo, got you. Like, for, for instance, even me, I forget. Like, yo, hold on a second. We'll start September come or whatever. All right, you put a list of your whole songs. Then I'm like, yo, right, the same thing he does. Yo, let me, yo, let me see what, what this if a royalty statement even came in. Wait a second, where's this Pac record at? So then I boom, I hit up Interscope, I hit up. Universal. Oh, we forgot, we got to check. Yo, oh, it's tabulated. No, 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 I didn't have no issues because guess what? <laughs> I had my contracts. I had everything. And they paid you, bro. The next check came. Mercedes Benz brought, bro. Thank mm -hmm. you, Pac. Next check came. You know what I mean? Like, yo, thank you, Snoop. But you got, but you, but you, but you got, but you got to know. I, I tell you these people. You got to be on it, though. I, 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 no, that's I, I, how I'm having the same. Yo, you be talking to me Beyonce. like, yo, it's Beyonce. September. Yo, I'm calling him. I'm calling Beyonce, him. please <laughs> stripe the album so I can get my Yo, this, yo, Bobby, <laughs> jump and sign jump the fucking sample. So you say, yo, Bobby, this dude, we, this is the worst thing I ever did. Sign a producer, a, 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 what's that, production? Producer deck. deck. Yeah. Because now, yo, I'm still waiting for my money from yeah. Bobby because he didn't sign the long form Yeah, contract. he got to sign the long form copy to get your money. You know what I'm saying? He got to so harass like the that. nigga. And, 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 and the lawyer might not want to talk to him about no. that. No. How? No, no. And then no. he's still mad. Bro, sorry, Shaw. Yeah, yeah. Who you sorry, mad Sorry, Shaw. Yeah. Got you to deal, Sorry, Shaw. Well, you know so you, you got to sign it for Shaw's money. money. I'm not signing that How shit. How much money do you think that's been tabulated? Yo, bro. Rough estimate. Hot Boy recouped $33 million in the same year, so he's recouped already. You know what I'm saying? We ain't spent a lot of money on him. He went to jail in six months. He recouped. He got to sign off. That's what I was telling you so about. So don't sign no producer decks, man. Yo, yo, bro. I, yo, yo, bro. I've been waiting for this Beyonce shit. Her shit didn't yo, came out. I remember when he first know. told me. She was on tour. To go, ah. No, no. I told him. I told him. I said, I said yo, because I, I, I got a you small got piece what? about jumping, jumping. Yo, right from, from Javon. <laughs> Look at his right? face. Right. Right. So every so every every month, they, I mean every pay period, they might send you four hundred dollars, mm -hmm. eight hundred. It's light, but what people don't know is you're getting eight hundred dollars from a record that was out twenty years ago, and you know, and I'm only getting a a fraction of a fraction of mm. this shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm getting ten percent of half of whatever whatever, whatever. it is, yeah. right? Yeah, but so the nigga calls me. Javon says, "Yo, guess what?" We on Beyonce, y'all. I said, how the fuck we on Beyonce? Yeah. Yo, she sampled jumping, jumping, because I got it signed off on. They couldn't get it signed off on. I worked magic and got that shit signed off oh, on. That's yes. how I got the percentage. Yeah. So I called Han. And I said, I got it, Han. <laughs> like, he said, so when the money going to come to Yo, I'm acting like right? it's my money, Shaq, because I, I, I know. I said, I'm about to have some money. Yeah. So, so he says, when the money come? I said, I don't know, two, three years. He was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> but the album's out and selling. I said, they everybody got to sign off on that bitch. Yo, I yeah. swear yeah. Beyonce got to read everything and say she's cool with it and mm -hmm. sign up for every but you day. Gotta understand, like Sean, before time, the Beyonce, man. I was spoiled because he was, a, I don't want to say the dollar he was making off all the other records. So I already did the math. Like, I, like I, it's my money. Yeah, because Rock did records for Beyonce yeah, and so he like, did yeah, free, so we got paid Yo, on. He a did bad year he for did, him. He did Bootylicious remix. We got mm -hmm. paid he on. He told me what a bad year was. And yeah, the like, bad year. I, I can say the first royalty check from fucking, fucking, if and free, and we got hardly no publishing or anything. The first check off the first sales was like three hundred and sixty-eight thousand. Yeah. For which record? If and free. If and free. Mm -hmm. On, on the so, fucking so, Destiny so, Fulfillment. And we yeah. didn't get, and, and yo, and we bust <laughs> down. See? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and we and gave. And imagine the people that don't. Yeah, no. nigga, and we gave a point, but that we was giving points sit. to the writers, mm -hmm. shot. Mm -hmm. So that was essentially off of two points because we took my writers' big draws and said, we're going to give you a point and bust it down amongst y'all. Mm. So we rocked. So we rocked 368K off the first. The next check was still like, because you know when the shit sell, yeah, yeah. they selling. They don't come right back no, down. Don't, don't so go, your next check might go up. Yeah. Or it was, the next one was 300 and, 
thirty thousand was right. the second one, nigga. That's right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So after that, then it goes down to a hundred. Then it goes down to fit. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Thirty eight thousand yep. and all that different type of shit. But you get to but rock then that you money. You see them go do Super Bowls and all that. Then other that stuff, shit goes up back again. Up. Yeah. That's why the streaming shit is kind of whack because you I was can't gonna ask tell. you about that. Yeah. How's how's the money game for you now? Streaming with all these records now? Oh, Does tell it fifth go on tour again, man? I love it all. <laughs> <laughs> love it all, man. <laughs> Yeah, tell him do the next Super Bowl again. Man. I love it, man. I'm grateful for it. Thank you. I told you people don't have those records though. Yo, and it's then 50, very rare. And fifty is still relevant. Yeah. Yeah. See, see, this is what don't people don't understand. When you're still relevant, it pushes the needle for your music mm-hmm. further as you get older. If he would have faded to black, it wouldn't have been. It would have been a classic album. Which but is he the average been, rapper. Yeah, they but he wouldn't have been a so. classic nigga. Yeah, you're right. When you're a classic person mm-hmm. and artiste, it goes totally goes, different than, than everybody else, bro. Shaw, what is that feeling like? Because you know Drake just said that um, Joe Button's career is considered a failure. But the acts you have, it's just home runs. You, Yo Gotti, I, who would have expected? I remember when Yo Gotti was first on the scene and I was in Atlanta running around. Five Star Chick time? Nah, that was before. Okay, before Five Star Chick. And I was like, I, I couldn't understand the appeal. And I, I always remember, I was like, what do you people really see in Yo Gotti? And the greatest response, and I had no response for this. He's like, the same thing y'all see in Mano. Wow. At that uh, time, yeah, and I was like, at that time. That's what they said. But that was yeah. way before the two signed way, way before. before. See, I'm going to give a shot credit. Yeah, that's when he was that's on like RCA. That's like 09. Yeah, that's 09, before. 2010. When you signed him, mm-hmm. I've never seen Yo Gotti on that big of a scale before. Mm-hmm. And I think, and, I, and mm-hmm. I'm going to keep it real. I think those were Yo Gotti's best records. That set, Yo, Ga- mm-hmm. that set yeah. Yo Gotti up to go where he's going and sign other people. The when he came down, when he got that Sony money, mm-hmm. and he was traveling with the cars, the yeah. marketing. The way he yeah. moved, it always, was, I loved it. Business minded, his mm-hmm. crew. Did his you know that every, about him? Or? I, yo, I didn't. What was I it? Did, yeah. First, I, you know, because actually Benny Pugh is the one that brought him in. Yeah, were he said, Benny yeah, Pugh? Bro. As Benny Pugh, bro. Yeah. Wow. And they flew me to Miami as I was exiting Def Jam. I signed my contract six months before I was, you know what I mean? So I was destined to be there. So then I go to Florida and I'm like, yo, all right. And he started playing records. I see his vibe, see his energy, the crew, they, the way they move. And then when we started working, it's the first MC in a long time since 50 and all of them that when I'm giving him beats and he's recording them, mm. right? Like he's like, and he's actually cutting the records and not taking a week to cut a record. We doing songs Fast. each day. And I haven't seen that. It's been a little like, damn. Or, or he's listening to me like, yo, here, I'm gonna go get J. Cole on this. Mm. Right? You know what I mean? Cold, cold winds. You know what I mean? That we did that cold, cold blood, right? Mm. Mr. Right. Boom. J. Cole, I go get J. Cole verse, come back, Gotti, like, oh shit. And then boom, now you looking at Gotti like he a, like, oh shit. He, he moved differently then. That album really shaped a lot of things, right? Yeah. And he killed that shit, and that was one of the best. Have you come out with an album with, since then? Nah, he did a lot of since then. Yeah, he, he did a lot the of albums since, album since, 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 since then. He did yeah. another I Am. He kept going. But, but the kept executive going. God he is. No, nah, and look who he's signing. I'm more impressed. CMG is See, He's it's, like, for me, mm-hmm. and, I, and, and everybody, no, say what you're watch about to the say. scale, because I'm going to say Jay-Z, and I'm not saying he's on Jay-Z's level, but, I, but, but what I am going to say is, I'm more impressed with Yo Gotti's business. Me too. He got billionaire potential. Than yeah. his rapper shit. Yeah. Yo no, Gotti, he's good. Cool. You gotta no, get no. a studio. I'm not, no, no, no. He was cutting records. I like, don't, don't let's not get it mm. fucked up. I like Yo Gotti. I'm not saying I don't like his music. What yeah. I'm saying, what I'm more impressed with, like, I just said to niggas, like, I'm impressed with Jay Z. Jay Z might be number one to, to a lot of niggas. Mm-hmm. But the most impressive part about Jay Z for me is he's bidding against a nigga to put a casino. In Times Square, yeah. he's been five hundred fifty million. Doing shit that's different. Yeah, been billions of dollars, yeah. bro. Like that, that. that putting canceling forty forty here, niggas think it's over, and putting the ill forty forty inside the casino <laughs> exactly. in Times Square. That's right. That's right. You no, know, this shit forever, nigga. Is a 40-40. I mean, yeah. I'm, I, I, I am thoroughly yeah. impressed by a nigga yeah. who sold crack this? and Marcy and is doing that. And on the low, in the Barclays, there's two forty forty. Yeah. 
The one that niggas know and the other the one. The one that you don't, don't know. know. Unless you know, uh, you, no. you know somebody. If you got to know somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Been in that no, one, niggas but, don't know, yeah, I ain't been in that one. I Let me hang out one. with y'all, bro. I've been in that <laughs> one. <laughs> the food tastes you a little outside, bit better. Bro. You everywhere. I've been, yeah, so, been in that one a long time ago because Power 105 did they shit in the Barclay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we used to always do the shit in the private shit. Yeah. And then the rooms would be there. So when Clue would be back there, I still remember when... when um. Jeezy did his joint. Me and Clue was back there with Hove and B and, and other people. It would mm -hmm. be like eight people back there. It wasn't a lot of people back there, but you back there, the black glass come out. Mm -hmm. You don't know who's in what yeah. room. Mm -hmm. The Rihanna comes out of the right, room. Like that, yeah, it's, 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 it's every everything, all, all the champagne. As soon as you walk in, everything free. Free, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. yeah it, ain't, it ain't no, no nobody taking no fucking tip. Mm -hmm. Nothing. If you want a tip, cool, but they don't need it, nigga. They, they pay. One, one nah, thing that's. It's real. Extravagant and opulence is normal and regular when it comes to the music industry. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember when we went to that Deontay Wilder event, they just kept sending so much food and champagne, I had to leave. It was like, I could not hang. <laughs> hey, yo, he, he nigga left me. Yo, and no, I, real I, shit. I, I told was, him to come. Was, I told him to come and I said, yo, you said, I, said, I said, yo, the budget's crazy. It's a towel. But they ain't gonna be about 15 people here. He's like, what are you talking about? I said, the spot holds probably 200, but it's gonna be 15 of us here. And it was literally 15 of us had a DJ, Freedom came and yeah. DJ. Yo, like it was 100 people there. We oh, watched fuck. the draft with yeah. Zion and them and all types oh, of yeah. wild oh, shit. Oh, Yo, oh, shot. I've never crazy. seen something where they wouldn't even let the bowl get half empty. Yeah. It's like, oh, come uh. Yeah, and replenish it right yeah. back. That's, and shit was wild. That's that and good we, life, I said, that's man. a Haitian nigga dream. Yeah, for real, bro. And yo, <laughs> and, 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 yo and, and, and this nigga that's left me. Yo, I he couldn't had, handle I it. I said, bro, I said, bro, where you going? It's more champagne coming out. It's he lit in here. Light and one he up, said, man. Build he new said, new yo, appetite, yo, I'm going home. And we all looking like, who the <laughs> fuck goes home with <laughs> everything in towel for free? Yo, it was just too much. It's horse towels everywhere. Whoa, towel's my spot, bro. Yo, shot. See? Shot, it's Pours everywhere, yo, yo. nigga. Tyler and he's and I'm looking at this nigga. I'm like, you leaving in the champagne and the food and the horse. Like and he, he was just getting started. It was pretty much. We was no. there. They left this shit close. Which, we which closed that was shit the down. One, the, one on the one, no, the one right in for 14th or 16th oh, 14, Street. Okay, yeah. that one. The, yeah. oh, the original yeah, yeah, when yeah, niggas yeah, used to yeah, go there. Yeah, yeah. The there one, the one on 50 something though, man. Oh, you love that one. Yo, cause you like that one. Yeah, yeah. Now that's the only time. I ever sat and ate dinner with Dre in, in the city. Oh, That's the only, and he was on the, on, the, on the top, like on the gotcha. second floor. That was different, bro. It was kind of fire, bro. Like I like that one, bro. We just sat up the other day. We had a young female writer here, and she was talking about how she's annoyed how produce, how the world of production has become. You know, they're just throwing beat packages together, and it's just, they don't care. The the beats don't even have feeling. What, have you heard a producer that gives you that feeling? What do you feel about the oh, production yeah. game? It, well, that's the thing. The ones mm. that they're going for now are just doing those little draw your beats in, right? Mm -hmm. I still rock with the real ones. The sampling is really, you know, mm. doing the new STEM stuff, pulling things out. Recreating, mm. you know what I mean. So I work with real producers. Like mm. he know, like we yeah, yeah. we talked to all know. the producers. That's I had a producer. You conference. always been a producer. You know what I mean. Yeah. I'm a producer advocate. Like all this thing all used to people. roll around with a CD booklet. I can give sure. you a dozen producers that'll tell you, yo, I'm getting paid to this date for the shit you did. Like I'm all for the producers, bro. You mm -hmm. like listening to all for that. The, to be still, I used it's to a always do that. That's how do you still like listening to it right now. Well, I don't got a reason to. So I don't want to do it for no reason. I'm okay. making my own beats. I don't want to hear your beats unless unless I'm working on. Back then we was working on so much albums I couldn't even produce mm -hmm. because we on the road. I can't make beats on it. You like, mean MOP beats, Mob yeah, Deep beats, fucking you know, Lloyd Banks. Do you make beats the same way still? I make beats better than ever right now. Well, More based on the great, technology. Based on everything. Yup. Mm. It's new everything. I'm still on the MP, but just the Renaissance on the computer. Mm -hmm. And I rock with Serato every now and then. Yeah. You know what I mean? I rock with the STEM stuff, all of that. So, you know what I mean? As a producer. I still dig into the technology. As a producer, it's a two part question. Mm -hmm. I, I fucked with Dr. Dre, but I want to know his opinion. What, what was it like when you first got in the studio with Dre being a producer mm -hmm. and you love right? voices? And what makes Dre so special? Yo, and this is what I learned and used to me to this day. Mm -hmm. For one, he actually mixes the beats in the songs, vocals mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah, I've heard. That's not no one else doing that. So for me, 
I'm doing it on a small scale in a Mackie in my crib with fifth that he's doing it on an SSL. I've never seen, you know, you see, you know, I've never seen a producer actually do that. It's mm -hmm. always an engineer doing it. So that was the first thing. Two, you get in the room, there's a keyboardist over there, there's a bass dude over there. It, it, the whole room is filled with musicians. So it's, he's bringing in energy from all different places. So he's bringing in the best of the best. Yeah. So no matter what he's doing, it's going to be something. Even if he's not doing it, he'll start with the drums. But then he's telling this dude, play this, play it like that. Mm. You go in the booth, he's telling you how to cut your vocals. I've never did that. If you get in the booth, I'll be like, say that over, but not telling him how to say it over. Dre telling him the tone. He's telling him to raise this. Mm -hmm. He's telling him, you know what I mean? Everything. How to say So that's where you learn so much from Dre, where you see the quality and you see that he's not just sitting in the room hoping you make a record. He's, he's making, making the record he's with you. And to go back to your point, they, they say he's one of the few dudes that's going to use every channel on the oh, board. I've never seen for, that. For I'm like, every least, individual piece of When he did Hate It or Love It, that mix... How long did it, how long does the mix take with Dre? It don't take, it take, it was like a day of regular, mix. Regular day, day mix day. it? He'll go back to it again, but for the main part of the day. Okay. He bang it out. He ain't, he ain't no long dragged out type of dude. It don't take too mm. long with because, Dre. Because when we worked He's with Dre. He's an Aquarius, Dre, man. He ex, ex, well, that's when, a, when we worked with Dre, we did three songs in a day with Yummy, but Yummy man. was special. Yeah, yeah it's, yummy, it's, it's a collision. On that right, and Yummy was special. And when Dre got a hold of Yummy and saw I, I, I was cutting the vocals with her, he was like, you the illest manager I, I've ever seen. He was like, yo, Randy, I've never seen this before. And we was looking, Rock Wilder was there and mm -hmm. Yummy was there. We looking at Dre like, are you saying this about me? And then we're hearing how he makes the beat. I saw him make a sound with a trash can. Top. Yeah. Bong, mm -hmm. bong. Bong, and yo, put that up there, mix that. Yep. Bong, and you come in and it's going, bong, bong. You know what beat that was? Oh my God, it was a game beat. Fuck, game, I met game, Damn, nobody even knew game. Yeah, same mm -hmm. way. I met game in there, game was writing when 50 was signed when I was doing this. Brooklyn was down with y'all. Brooklyn, that's my homie. Brooklyn yeah. was We're down Brooklyn with y'all, yo. but Brooklyn was gone by the time yeah. Yummy had, had came Brooklyn around because cheap. they wanted, Dre wanted to replace her with, with Yummy and we were supposed to sign that day. Like he, oh, he wanted to do the deal Brooklyn, that day. Bro, yeah. wow. And we chose to go home and be like, yo, to tell cash money, we not gonna do the deal with y'all. Mm -hmm. By the time he came back to Dre, Mike Lynn was like, Dre's offended. And I was like, offended? I'm like, these cash money niggas is on the street though. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I can't That's... just, I can't just have a million dollars from these niggas and just not yeah. sign it. Yeah, I will be making music with Dre, but Dre's not coming outside. Yeah, yeah. he don't. He We're don't. gonna be outside with these niggas. Mm -hmm. I just want to go explain to, give them their respect, and tell them face to face. So I can't turn down Dr. Dre. Mm -hmm. Plus, he's giving us more money because yeah. <laughs> he's known to pay more money. Nah, he will. He'll pay for his shit. He you know what I'm saying? Will. Definitely. Right. Will. So, definitely will. question for you. Which do you like, the SSL or the AMAC? SSL. I always like the AMAC board. It just has a different sound, even though... What are you talking about? <laughs> that shit look good, SSL too. All SSL day. looks boring. The, the, the G-Series, to be exact. Huh? G-Series, to be exact. Yeah. That's I love all the AMAC shit. Pat them down. Me and Pat them down. We it's like in going in reverse using that board, too. crazy to that. It's just like, yeah. How you feel about the rap right now? Rap sucks right now, man. Okay, thank you. All right. It sucks right now, man. Rap sucks right now, man. What, what, what's making like, it? I'm just suck. searching everywhere to find something. Like, there's nothing good, bro. This is not really. The beats ain't good. The rap is not trash. good. No. I be yo, I, I, yo. I, I said this when we was on uh, when when we was on Ma um, math show, mm -hmm. and I, I came out and said like, yo. This is the best of the trash. It is. That everybody, that everybody is choosing from. And I said on that show, y'all are going to see the effects of this shit later. And, and niggas thought I was hating and laughing. And they was like, what don't you like about it? it I, and I was just like this. It's just not, not good. good. Nah. Mm -hmm. Then you got ones that you like, and then you're like, damn, but you could tell they probably ain't mixing it really right and stuff yeah. like that. Sound mono, like, you know what I mean? Mono, wow. You know I mean? <laughs> like it's coming it. out of one speaker or something like left side. Oh, it just, man. Yo, it just, because it has, like, it's not good, quality, bro. Man. The quality is not the same. It's not that they're not talented. You know what they're not doing? They're not trying to hone their talent. These niggas is rapping on Friday and really, because of technology, going to cut records on Wednesday. 
Yeah. No, my nigga, you got to write records. You're not Jay Z. I, I, I don't write. Stop it. You do write. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> go write your records and go get better. Just work on your craft. That, that's what niggas not doing. I tell people with with, with podcasting, we got to work on our craft. That's right. We got to do work different things. Every day. Y'all schedule but here's the thing, doing. though. Hip hop is not consistent. Some of these artists, you where's the next album? But here's the where's thing. The Wait, where's the next session? Where's but the S exactly. and Shab, right? Where? When you don't see what's going on, you the only way you can identify greatness is based on results. Mm -hmm. We just spoke about what it's like for Dre to be in the studio. Do they really know what it's like for Shah Money to be in the studio? What it's like for Esso to be? I've seen you in the studio. That is on documentary. All right. You, you dig what I I'm saying? I got three, four. I'm gonna answer. Go for it. Go for it. Based on what he said, right? Yeah. I signed Big Crit. Right. Mm -hmm. He's working with Shaw Money. I the fuck guy with Crit, is so yo. much. You know what we did, right? Yeah. And we working on the album. I'm like, yo, this because me, I loved the fact that he had some positive vibrations. Mm -hmm. He was sending some messages. His sound was crazy, right? I wanted the world to hear this. Yeah. This is this is as Cole was coming, as mm -hmm. Kendrick was coming. I remember coming. that time. Same vibration, right? Mm -hmm. And but he from the South, South, right? Yeah. Mississippi, right? Mm -hmm. He was doing all his beats, right? And I said to him once, bro, the same thing I said to Gotti. Yo, do something to this record. I brought him a verse and a beat, right? Yeah. Guess who verse and who did the beat? J. Cole. Same thing with Gotti. Here's the just Insert your verse right here, mm -hmm. right? Crit cuts the record, right? Yeah. Then he turns around, I'm like, yo, this shit is fucking crazy. He's like, yo, but I gotta produce my whole album. I said, nah, bro, you need to do this. Like, this This needs to be. He's like, no, I need, so he's not listening, right? Mm. So I go on the A&R meeting. This is Def Jam. DJ Khaled is in there, A&R, yeah. Lenny S. You got Dream, Karen Kwok. No ID, mm. Max Goose. Y'all had an all-star mm -hmm. No, it was, yo, it was probably the, the, this, this is fucking... Y'all had the all-star niggas Bulls in there. This Chicago prime at this. The LA yeah. staff was yeah. crazy. Illis and our team, right? So when I played a record, right, I seen Khaled's response. I was telling, I was go to the side, yo, Khaled, man, this dude don't even want to put it on the album. Yo, he said, yo, send me that shit. Bro, Khaled, take that record, put Kendrick on it, puts it on his album, and it's probably one of the biggest records crit with the features and everyone. And that vibe that, you know, Khaled didn't have those type of MCs on his album. Yeah. Kendrick, Cole, and Crit on that same record. Fire. This could have been his, but he wanted to do it for himself. So as as a person where you try to- wouldn't have had Kendrick, it would have just been him and Cole, so it would have hit even still harder. Still would have hit. I, 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 I know that one even hit Kendrick, harder, but I had to give it to hard. someone mm -hmm. for it to go out. You know what I'm saying? But instead, it could have been his. So some of them, like, they could fight their own battles because they want to prove something to themselves. But I'm looking at a bigger vision for you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they don't see that. Why was it so important? Because that's interesting to hear because I had a dynamic with Crit. You know what I'm saying? I did a bunch of interviews with him, always super smooth. And I always remembered I did an interview with the, the, the porn chick, Capri Styles, mm -hmm. And she's like, Big Crit is my favorite He's artist. He's dope, bro. Yo, and... I had hit Crit, and I remember he called me with his uncle. He's like, yo, what you mean? That's my dude. So hearing that he's so determined to produce, mm -hmm. I'm trying to understand the psychology. Why was he that? He stood in his own way. They all like that. They stand in their his own man, way. Dutch is, is, is my man. Is Dutch I'm, is my I'm, I'm, I'm on the management side. Okay. Yeah. I, I knew Dutch before he even had Crit. Mm -hmm. Dutch was in the studio with Rock Wilder in the film center mm -hmm. building on Ninth <laughs> Avenue, <laughs> nigga. Yes, in the yeah. back yeah. room. Yo. What are you talking about, 44th, 44th nigga? Mm -hmm. we, we had the film center building. Reggie, Red Man was downstairs. Red Man introduced. Introduce Rock to the building. Yeah. Rock was upstairs with who? Wow. Jane Blaze. Jane Blaze. Jane Blaze was up wow. there with us. Yo, mad people was up there with us. Yo, that's where we did if, if and free with big draws mm. and shit uh -huh. like that. Yeah. That's where we made it. And Kamala Gordon those days. put me with mm. Rock Wilder. That's how I started that's the manager. How Shout out to Kamala Gordon. That's how I started managing wow. Rock Wilder was from Kamala Gordon. If somebody's Gordon. trying to get into this Praise. game, yo and they're really trying to make their name and really make some good money, longevity money. What's the angles? Because you've been A&R executive, producer. You know, what's what's an angle you think for them? And if there's somebody, is it an oh, artist? What if, all right, how about this? What if they're money hungry? Mm -hmm. What's the best lane for them? To, you know, <laughs> like, I want to make money in this shit. 
Is it going to production side? Being they, artist, man. Being artist? Being wow. artist makes the most, man. They, oh, man. Unless, but how many labels, you know, it ain't gonna be a label, so you're gonna be an artist. And artists make the money, yo. Mm. You know, you could produce, but you gotta wait for that hit. And you getting small advances up until then. Mm. So that's gonna have to wait. You're gonna have to be patient. That's what we are. My first yeah. check, 2,500, you know. You gotta wait till you get to the 20s and the 30s. 30,000. You gotta wait. How long is the wait? Because y'all both went through it. Ah, you talking about four or five years, man. Yeah. When I got my first, I mean, because you getting little shit. You get yeah, 7,000 here. Mm -hmm. You remember when you get your first little yeah. 7,000, yeah. 7,500? Yo, it feels great, but it goes so fast. Yes, and I'm talking do. about back when 7,500 was a couple dollars still. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It still was going fast because we, you had to really be outside. You couldn't pull up in some stupid shit. Mm -mm. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because niggas would look at you. If, if he pulling up in some clunker shit and he got good beats, it's like, how, how, no, how good are your beats, bro? Yeah. This, is, this is a part of the whole entertainment. This is a part of the whole thing. Yeah. You got to be have a swag. Cameraman, God had to have swag. Yeah. You know what? Niggas can come. Nigga, no. You got to have one. Way ill as shit. Fuck your oh, back. Yeah. We in Nigga, the Coliseum the getting way, crazy, The yo. way we rocking we right rocking, now yo, is, is way, we way, was going crazy. way cheaper. Queens, bro, way real. cheaper. Even with niggas wearing all the stupid design and all that. No, nigga. You had to have real assets, nigga. Your jewelry, it wasn't them fake, them lab diamonds. They was all <laughs> real, nigga. All right? That was part of your equipment. You had oh, to have your crib in Jersey. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You had to get your crib in Jersey. Mm -hmm. You had to have your wizard. You had to have your jewelry right. You had to have some money in your pocket. You had to have some hoes. Mm -hmm. And niggas got to see you with your hoes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They got to come to the Grammys. You got to have two, three hoes that's cool with being out with you and you fucking them. If you're not, you're not pimping. Yeah. It was a whole bunch of... I was, Other requirements, I was, I was Popeye nigga. On the tour. They called me Popeyes. I knew how to see the pops, man. <laughs> they called me Popeye. I you gotta to, have it. I could predict a pop. Or, it seems weird, you know, but that was a, re a re requisite. Prerequisite. Mm -hmm. A prerequisite mm -hmm. of me saying you can manage me, Sha. <laughs> <laughs> That's real shit. It's real shit. Yo, and Finn, then you Finn gotta be to smart and do deals. I, we go to college, see me, yo, bro. I would come to the meetings, flies like I was an artist. He'd yes. Go, what's up, bro? What are you, you have to, oh, bro. I'm Queens, bro. This is how we get busy. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's the same. That's the same <laughs> shit. And my and my shit don't gotta be new, but I it's gonna be water. brand new, yeah. fresh. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be fresh. Yeah. At all times, yeah. I don't give a fuck if it's a. A thirty dollar pair of Nikes, a hundred fifty dollar pair. This not the fifty five Air Force, the fake Air Force One. Oh, bro. oh I man. know a few of them that was <laughs> <laughs> the extra thick soles, bro, Yo. at the Coliseum, bro. Yeah. What would you do? I know they used to wear them on tour too, but what's something? <laughs> what's something that you wish that you could do all over again? What do I wish that I could do all over again? Hmm. I sat with Jimmy Iovine two days before Christmas in 2004, and um, he flew me to his house. I didn't know what the meeting was about. He was basically interviewing me. He was seeing, you know, yeah. if I could be one of his soldiers, right? And I actually just kind of gave him the fifth is the boss, fifth is the OG, like, so I didn't give him that you could, I could rub yeah. together with you and like, I gave him, you know, fifth is the big homie, like, that's it. So I think, that kind of stopped the relationship from growing. But you was put in a, a, a weird position. I was. Knowing and, the person and, I or seeing, yeah, because I'm a, not going to act true. like, because I'm known 50 as a kid. So so the persona that I see as a businessman, that could have been a no, little bit. Because I already yeah. went through that with him and Steve Stout based mm -hmm. on that. He was like, you with Steve or with me? So I already know how he is when you get close to another big billionaire, millionaire dude. And you, like, I'm on the phone with them. So he's like, nah, nigga, you with me. So I didn't give, like, that vibration where Jimmy felt like he could send me or whatever. So he kind of like, you know, that's 50's guy. So I never one. was able to kind of bond Cultivate in. that. And yeah, turn that into cultivate something. Cultivate the relationship. It could something else for myself after or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I was just under sun. And that's what it looked like. And that's mm -hmm. what I gave him. Mm -hmm. The loyalty was there. And that's what I wanted it to see. Like, oh, this is what it was. So that's one of the things that always made me think like, damn, look at Jimmy, man. Jimmy the man, bro. My, Jimmy my, the man. My, mine was the Dr. Drake thing. I wish we would have just stayed in California 
if I could do it all, all over again, I just would have, knowing the business and how people don't really care, because I was still, I was loving the music, I would have. I got another one. I, I would have did that all, all over I again. I need to put this one out. Go, go, on. go for it. Met with Dre, did a project for him, and never got paid. So, you, you think someone is going to pay you, and they, they that big homie, and you just think it's going to happen, you got to. Do your paperwork. So I always did, and I'm like, damn, bro, he got me. You know what I mean? But I did the work. Even though the artists didn't come out, there's a million artists that didn't come out. Mm -hmm. And he got paid for them. The work, though. You know what I'm saying? So that's one of those things where you look back like, damn, bro, I'm thinking I'm just, he gonna trust, he, we good. And it's like, damn, Don. Fucking billionaire, bro. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> so it's like little shit like that. Yeah, 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 you, you gotta, gotta always just stay tight. on time, bro. Cause even when you think that somebody gonna take care of you, still we still hurting each other, bro. If they got a problem with you doing business, they trying to get you. That's it. Trust me. That's if they're it. not trying to get you, they got no problem with That's doing it, business. That's it, man. And they rely on that trust to crush you, bro. Yeah. You What's know what the mean? money commandment yeah. that you live by to keep money in your pocket? Man, I'm not a worldly dude, man. I live, I'm happy. Pay your shit off. Just keep a life, life, good life, man. Not overdoing it, overspending, overwilding, driving wild, crazy cars. That's, you know, that's just not me. So I'm, I'm good. You know what I mean? You're, you're conservative with conservative, your Conservative, bro. I ain't wilding. I ain't doing it for the world to see. I ain't doing it for you to see that. I done did that and mm -hmm. seen what that does. You know what I mean? So. It's the Haitian I mean, in your blood. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Humbled up, yeah. which is a bad thing sometimes. Bro. We ain't flashy. You know what I mean? So. I mean, the good ones are. Yeah. <laughs> Nigga, what? Yeah. yeah. South Beach killers. Exactly, man. But no, nah, I'm just on, on a, just a mellow tone, bro. I'm good. You know what I mean? So I ain't trying to do too much crazy wildness. You know what I mean? Investing in these new artists, investing in myself, investing in my family business, and just keep going. Was you there when the G Unit name was created? Yeah. Yeah. How, how'd y'all come up with that? Well, that's fifth. All day. How did yeah. he come up? That's with all day. Fifth, fifth. He was a gorilla. He was yeah. on some. Just we gonna get it regardless. He was a because gorilla unit at that time was such a different name. Yeah, he honestly, and then changed it to G unit. Yeah, and all it was that. gorilla unit. Uh -huh. and he, yeah. That was just his stance. You know, he was a bully. He was with the bullshit. He was with the. <laughs> he was with all of it, bro. Mm -hmm. One of my first times vibing with him in a session, we had to slap box. You remember? You used to yeah. have to slap uh, box yeah. the whole. He was on and, that time. And, and he used yeah. to be a boxer, so that's he, unfair. He was on that time. I'm like, yo, bro, I'm about to make this nigga, yo, this, you just want to see who you are. You know what yeah. I mean? So he was always with that shit, bro. So <laughs> that that was him, bro. Gorilla unit and just yo. all the wild soldiers coming, wilding out, shoot, just wilding, bro. And that was his unit. And he chose, like, if you 25, you choosing the 20 years old because they going to listen. So he picked it like that generation. Mm. And that's what smurfing all of them was. And he had the unit, bro, and they would all listen, bro. It was really militant, bro. What made them want to do like the other guys? Like MOP. Me, I was into, you know, you know, like I try to bring J. Cole, J. Cole came in his crib. You know, shout out to Mike Rooney. He brought him to the crib. To like, Fifth Script? Fifth Script. Yeah. It's the and same Mike Rooney. I told you it took him to Mark Piss. There's yeah, living like in Mike California Rooney, off bro. the points. All right. Yeah, so off the points. Yeah. Yeah. So like so I was into trying to find these new ones, the yeah. next ones. Biff was the one that did, uh, you know, Mob Deep, M.O.P., Olivia. He, that was his vision. And, you know, I enjoyed the Mob Deep, but they, you know, those are legends, you know what I mean? And, and same with M.O.P., but I was more so trying to bring in new ones. So, so Fifth just passed on J. Cole, or he just couldn't see it? Or he, did... he didn't see it, bro. He, yeah. he, we had jeans like this on. He he wasn't feeling that <laughs> shit, bro. You know what I'm saying? He was like, he wasn't a thug, bro, basically. Got you. He couldn't see that. I was mm -hmm. like, bro, these kids about to start skateboarding and doing all this other shit we ain't doing. So what's up? What's up? I can only imagine his reaction. But the music was telling you this kid was it. Yeah. You heard it. But if he saw something else, he had Sierra upstairs. He didn't care, bro. <laughs> Yo, <back> <laughs> Yo, like, subscribe, super chat. It's That's been it. a great back conversation fuel. with Shaw Money. Bro. Queens, North Side Queens North in the building. Side. South Side Queens in the building. Canarsie, Brooklyn Canarsie. in the building. Oh, and where you from again, Ghost? Because I, I like to say the Bronx. Is it Westchester? Mount Vernon. Shout to Mount Vernon. Mount money Vernon, earning. Man. Money earning. Mount Vernon in the building. Follow Shot Money. He's on the gram. Shot Money Motivation. Thanks. 
get with him. He's doing great things still. He's still an executive in the business. He's always going to have the connections. I'm Follow that out. man. Yeah. Do your thing. I appreciate you coming Thank to you, rock bro. with us. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Backfield. We out of here. We definitely got to have who kid up here. Yeah, you got to, bro.